If your private app is acting like this. Are we there yet? No. 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 Are we there yet? Then watch on to stop the madness. If you have kids or have been a kid yourself, you'll be very familiar with the Are We There Yet line. When you build an app that needs to know when an event happens on a record, such as a new contact was created or a property has been updated, your app is kind of like those kids. It repeatedly asks the system if there's been a change to the database. And as any parent can tell you, this is a pretty inefficient system. It'd make a heck of a lot more sense if the kid would just ask the parents to tell them when they are there. Kids are not known for making sense, so that will never happen. But your app is not a child and can take advantage of waiting for when the system says there is a change. This is called a webhook subscription. The system will send you an alert with a payload telling you what has happened. Employing the webhooks can make your app much more efficient, making less API calls, and reducing the chances that it will go over an API limit. I'll have links in the description with additional resources on webhooks, API limits, and all that, but now let's check out how you can create a webhook subscription and test it out yourself. Okay, I have my account open, my demo account and you can see I have three tabs here. One is the dashboard. The one is a contact named Mabel McDonald. She's our uh, chief chicken. And I have unfortunately misspelled her address and my daughter is very upset about that. So we'll be updating that in a little bit. And here you can see something we can use to test our webhooks. It's webhook doc site. And you can see it provides you with a unique URL. You can copy and paste into your webhooks. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. But let's go ahead and create the private app that we'll use to create the webhook subscriptions. All right, there are two ways to go about it. Uh, you can go to CRM development, but if you do not have that, you can go to the settings over here. And if this is not, you go integrations and then the private apps. And let's just create a new one for this. And yes, I love an energetic river. All right, uh, we are dealing with contacts, so we need to add the contact scope on here. So I'm going to do a search for that. This is the only one we need, and we only need to read it right now. So I am going to create that scope and create that app. Boom, done. All right, now we're back to our app, and you can see this beautiful little thing called webhooks over here. We're going to click on that, and we are going to create a subscription. Edit the webhook. And this is where that webhook.site URL is going to come in hand. Let's go back here and grab that URL. Boom, boom. Uh, here's where you can change the throttling. Uh, make sure you don't have to set too low or too high. Too low, you might miss out. Some things might time out. You might not get some of the data. And if you have too high, uh, you might get too much data at the same time. So you might need to mess around with that. Uh, going here, we're going to create a subscription. We are looking at contacts. You can do multiple, but we're just doing contacts. We are listening for the property change event, and we are going to, yes, first name is what we're looking for, the property. All right, we're gonna click on subscribe, and boom, there we have it. Uh, a really cool thing, one thing that's it's, it's different than public apps is that if you do webhooks with public apps, they come in a paused state like this. I don't know how many times I forgot to unpause or activate that subscription, and it didn't work, and it messed with my mind. Uh, private apps, they come default out of the box as active, so you don't have to worry about that. All you do is go over here and hit commit the change. Now we have this active event subscription for first name property changes. Moving over to our friend Mabel. All right, Mabel, let's change that first name. Mabel. And hit save. And once we do that, almost immediately, this doesn't always happen immediately, but very quickly, you'll see that we have a request sent to... Nah, nah to our webhook.site, and here is all the information that was sent in that payload. The important thing here is our property value is Mabel. We know the property name is the first name. We know what app sent it. We know what portal ID is using it. That shouldn't be a big deal because this is a private app, so I don't think that's important, but if you had public, it would be important. And yeah, that's all there. Now you can go off and do all kinds of cool things on the Event subscription side, you can have a maximum of 1,000 events. Uh, you cannot have any webhooks attached to a private app that is associated with a project. That will be coming later on, but it is not available now. Uh, yeah, go out there, do cool things. Now you don't have to listen to, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? 
Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Bye-bye. <laughs>